Hi, I'm Tyler Colt from Zenata Consulting, and this tutorial on project templates inside of Zoho Projects uh, was taken from our 2022 webinar. If you do find it useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. And if you have any questions or feedback, please leave that in the comments section because we do read every single one. Thank you and enjoy. So to add a template, you'll actually go to the projects menu where you would see all of your active projects. You'll use the drop down up there at the top to select project templates. And then once you do that, you can actually go ahead and create a project template. Um, now, the other way to do this, if you're in an active project or if you're in, um, you know, one that's already running, you can kind of save it as a template. Uh, but most of the time you're going to go through this interface here which is just a little bit hidden under that submenu. Um, so skip over my pain and suffering. This is where it is. Um, once you can, once you're here, you'll go ahead and create that new project template. Um, you know, you'll give it a name, you'll give it the project overview that you'd like to have. Again, here, this kind of second box where you can choose from an existing project. So if you had one that you knew, hey, this is killer. We built this out custom for this one client. Now we're going to reuse what we did here on future projects. You can go ahead and just save it to a template this way. So I'll go ahead and add our template. And so now we're kind of working within our template. We'll need to add a couple of the key objects. So really quick, I'll just kind of define milestone, task list, and task uh, before we jump in. So the milestone is essentially a section of the project. Um, most of the time, a milestone is mostly defined by the number of days that it takes and kind of the order that things go. So I might have a milestone that says, we're gonna start this on day zero and it's gonna take 15 days. And that milestone could have one, two, 20, 100 tasks associated with it, but it's kind of capturing like a period of time that should be like a section or segment of your project. So first we'll go ahead and add a milestone. Um, I've given this a very creative name of milestone one. Um, you can flag milestones as either internal or external, right? So if you wanted a client to have any visibility into this, you would need it to be an external milestone. In this case, I kept this one internal. And then here, as we're talking about, you're going to have this start after and duration. Um, when you're in templates, you're not going to work with start date and due date. You're going to work with start after and duration. And then when you create the project from the template, it will assign all of those start and due dates based on these numbers of days. Um, so here, you know, I've given this because it's milestone one, we're going to start on day zero and it's going to take us 15 days. So I've added that here. We'll see, I've also added a second milestone that's going to start after 15 days and that's going to take us 10 days to complete. So now clicking into a milestone is where I can actually go to add the task lists within that milestone. So a task list is essentially just a way to organize a group of tasks. You can have many different task lists inside of one milestone. So a common one might be on our side, you know, if I imagine Zanata using this and we're doing this for client onboarding, there might be a task list for Brett, right? To kind of like make sure that we've captured all the action items from the proposal, make sure that the invoice is paid and that they've booked their kickoff call. There might be a totally different task list for you know Josh or our internal team to make sure they're set up in the client portal and make sure that they've got all their analytics reports generated. Um, but all of those would be part of the milestone of client onboarding. So here we'll go ahead and add a task list. Um, I've called this our first tasks task list. Um, you can add these kind of one after another sequentially. So I'm going to go ahead and add more and add our second tasks. And now here I essentially have those two task lists under milestone one. Now, lastly, we just have to go one level deeper here um, into the actual tasks. So I'll click through the first tasks list. And now I can go ahead and add a task directly to here. And so again, we'll kind of scroll down this page together. So we'll give it a name. We'll give it a description. This can be really nice in your templates. So if you're thinking about, you know, when you hire new employees or you might have an employee that changes roles, you can actually predefine what needs to be done for all of these tasks in the template. 
Uh, we have some clients where these descriptions are paragraphs long and have bulleted lists and highlights and links out to, you know, go to this page, do this thing, you know, step by step. That can be really useful and it's well worth documenting in your template so that you don't have to write those things out over and over again. Now, kind of looking on the right hand side, you can also assign a default owner. <clears throat> so if this task is always going to be done by Zanata Demo, or maybe we want them to reassign it, but they're kind of the manager who's going to decide who will do it. Uh, we'll go ahead and set that default owner here. <clears throat> and then down here at the bottom, of course, we'll determine how many hours we expect this to take. So work hours is always the expected hours. Um, and then how long do we want to wait to start this? And then how many days do we expect it will take to complete? So again, start after and duration are going to end up calculating our start date and due date once we've actually generated the project. And so here we'll see, I've kind of, you know, Martha Stewart pulled this out of the oven and created a couple tasks here. Uh, I've kind of daisy chained them together, assuming that maybe it's one person doing these. So they're going to do the first one first, then the second one, then the third one. <clears throat> now back to our task overview, we'll see that those have all now populated into our template which looks very similar to a real project like Brett was showing earlier um, with the various tasks under their task lists, under their relevant milestones. <clears throat> These are also all going to display over on our Gantt chart, but we'll notice that there's one thing missing on this from when Brett was showing Gantt charts earlier, and it's those lines connecting our tasks. So right now there's no dependencies set up between either of these tasks. And we'll want to get that resolved so that if anything is to shift around and we know these have to happen in order, everything will kind of stay true and stay on track with our Gantt chart. So there's two ways to do a dependency. I'll show you the first way first, and then I'll show you kind of the um, quicker way that I generally do it uh, when I'm actually setting these up. So one of the ways to do these is through the task itself. So if I open up maybe task one here, if I open up task one, we'll see that down here at the bottom of the page, there is a section for dependencies. So again, right now there are no dependencies. If I open up the task, I have the option to add either a predecessor or a successor. Here I'll add a successor because it's task one. So task two will succeed task one once it's completed. I can just search this and it'll pull up any tasks within this project template. And now I have made that connection. And so now based on all those rules we talked about in settings, if something is done early or if something is pushed back, that second task is going to adjust itself automatically and kind of keep your Gantt chart on track. Now there's one kind of other way to do this, which is from the interface here. Um, it's kind of hard to show this. Uh, I tried taking a screenshot a handful of times. In essence, you can click and drag from one to the next, and it will just make that dependency for you. So oftentimes what I do is I make a whole bunch of tasks with some approximate start after and durations, and then I just kick it over to this Gantt chart section and click and drag through to create all of those various relationships. Um, the only time that you would really need to use the other menu is more complicated stuff. You might have like, multiple predecessors, multiple successors, and you kind of want to see them all in one list and just make sure everything looks proper. But if you have a relatively simple chain like this, it'll just save you some time to do the click and drag here. Um, now I want to kind of show those settings in action. So let's say I'm looking at my template and I realize that, you know what, task one is actually not going to start on day zero. I'm going to add some tasks before that. Um, so I can just click and drag task one. I caught this screenshot right in the middle of the load. Um, so you'll basically see that moving over task one will also move over task two and three um, while maintaining those dependencies so that any future updates are all going to keep them in line. We really do recommend setting up dependencies in these templates. Uh, it's going to save you just oodles of time when you actually get into Zoho projects and start using this um, because delays happen and things sometimes get done early. And if you didn't have those dependencies set up, someone might want to start working on task two too early, uh, you know, if task one got delayed, or someone might be sitting around twiddling their thumbs, waiting to get started on task two, when they actually could have already gotten started because we were ahead of schedule on that previous task. 
So really valuable to get these set up in your templates, uh, just so that again, your Gantt chart always stays as a nice record of truth and stays on track with your actual project. Now, last but not least, let's go ahead and create a project from a template. Um, so here I'm back to that kind of top level projects page. I'll go ahead and add a new project. Here I've chosen that template for the example project here that we just made. We'll see that I set a start date for the 25th. It'll always pop up this little window here, basically saying, you know, just so you know, right, all these dates are going to be based on start date. So when we set those start after and durations, those are all going to calculate based on when we say we're going to start the project. So now I've gone ahead and created those and we'll see that our tasks are basically starting off on the 25th of April. That's this Monday, if you're watching this live today. Um, and then over in our Gantt chart, we'll see that they've kept those relationships, but just backdated their start dates based on what we said we needed them to be when we made the project. Um, so again, as you can imagine, this is a real simple example with just three tasks. Um, this stuff can scale out and you can build really, really massive projects in here. Um, but again, we can't emphasize enough that templates are the big thing to use in Zoho projects. You don't want to go through all these steps every single time uh, when you're starting off a new project. And again, even if you just get this thing 80, 90% of what you need, it's still going to save you a ton of time once you actually kind of hit the ground running. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you did find it useful, please again, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Uh, that really helps us out and it'll make sure that uh, YouTube shows you our videos in the future when we put out more tutorials just like this one. Um, if you do have any questions or feedback, uh, make sure to leave those in the comments as well. We really do appreciate that. It helps us get better and better. And uh, after all that, we will uh, see you on our next tutorial video.